It's unconscionable. It's um, inhumane. Um, it feels punitive. Uh, I, I don't see any what they refer to as legitimate penological reason. Is a term we use in the profession. I don't see any legitimate penological reason to keep a person in these conditions for for this period of time. Chilling testimony sheds details of the death of Terrell Thomas, a Wisconsin inmate who died of dehydration last year. An inquest hearing into his death is underway to determine if charges should be filed. Now there are calls to remove Milwaukee County Sheriff David Clark. This took place in his jail. You know Sheriff Clark. You see him with his big cowboy hat all on television, uh, slamming President Barack Obama, slamming black folks and Black Lives Matter, and defending President Donald Trump at all costs. Maybe part of the problem is he spends more time running his mouth on television than doing his job as a sheriff. Well, according to court documents, Thomas went without water, folks, for seven days in solitary confinement at the Milwaukee County Jail before he died in April of 2016. Now, many of course, folks are questioning whether he should have been placed in jail at all because he is bipolar. Uh, and an immigration rights group has petitioned Governor Scott Walker to force Sheriff Clark out of office, but Governor Walker, a Republican, says it's up to voters to decide his fate and adds he wants to look at a scientific death, a scientific report about the death. Uh, here's a statement from Sheriff Clark, and as expected, Sheriff Clark slams the group, quote, they couldn't beat at, beat at the ballot box, well, they, should be, they couldn't beat me at the ballot box, but oh well. They couldn't beat me at the ballot box, so they are resorting to asking the governor to undo an election that was the will of the people. This is what scummy people and organizations do. Joining me on Skype from Milwaukee is Christine Newman Ortiz, executive director of Voices de la Frontera, which is the immigrant rights group looking to remove Sheriff Clark. So, uh, Christine, obviously, uh, Sheriff Clark, he loves to simply just trash folks uh, left and right. Uh, but uh, he, there have been four people who have died in his jail, and he refuses to comment at all. In fact, he has attacked the district attorney's office, he's attacked prosecutors, and has attacked county administrators who question his oversight of the jail. Yeah, I mean, we, um, the reason that both has, uh, got involved really is uh, has now started to form this uh, coalition um, of different groups that have been victimized by Sheriff Clark. Uh, has been because uh, he just recently announced that he wants to bring the 287G program to Milwaukee County. Milwaukee County is the most diverse um, county in the state of Wisconsin. It's got, it's a, the city itself is a majority-minority city. Um, and this is the program that would deputize its officers to act as immigration agents. So it's these kind of office, these kind of sheriffs or personalities like Sheriff Arpaio of Maricopa County who abuse their power, who have a record of human rights abuses, who, who should not be given more power. And, and it's just become evident. It's almost like a weekly thing. We're having to read about one more um, outrageous incident um, that, that really uh, we investigated, um, you, you know, that what can be done, whose authority is it um, before. And um, we've really taken up the demand as have numerous um, at the county level and at the state level um, that uh, mm -hmm. Governor Walker does have the authority to remove any elected sheriff um, if they have uh, misused public dollars, um, if they have undermined the public trust and are under investigation. And by easily, by all of those standards he has, you mentioned the deaths in the jail. Um, it's just been, you know, four within, um, you know, just this summer. And... Um, his attitude towards that is, um, you know, he, he doesn't care. He he delights um, in um, in his um, threats to people, in his disregard right. for human life, for public safety. Well, Christine, uh, uh, it, obviously the governor said, the, Christine, the governor said that he's, he's elected, uh, and he ran as a Democrat, was elected, uh, and there's an election next year, 2018. There's also taught but re Republicans are trying to recruit him to run for the United States Senate as a Republicans. That's a scary thought. I, yeah, it is. I mean, I actually think that, um, I guess to the first part, I would say that um, uh, you, voters can decide in 2018, but in the meantime, someone who has um, continued 
to make public threats to people who is blocking the current investigations taking place. There are many other investigations taking place. Um, one of the investigate, one of the people, um, one of the, the recent lawsuits has to do with um, a man that um, looked at him the wrong way at the airport. So he used his officers uh, to stop him, detain him. He missed his flight. He was interrogated. And so he's suing him. And the sheriff is not allowing uh, his deputies to be part of the investigation. So He's blocking that process and having to be sued. Um, he's also uh, spent a tremendous amount of money, of public dollars, in this um, theatrics and lawsuits. Um, and as you mentioned, he's amassed a, a tremendous amount of uh, personal wealth um, just by being a darling of these right-wing talk show hosts. And he's gotten more and more extreme, especially under the Trump administration. So the governor can, in the interim, appoint somebody. I mean, this is someone where if someone goes out and kills somebody, um, then uh, you uh, you will hold those people accountable. Uh, but so just the fact that you uh, that he's in that position does not make him unaccountable. It. In fact, he is absolutely accountable because he is in charge of, of that jail. Just recently, just a few All weeks right. ago, 40 women are part of a federal lawsuit because his policy is to have women um, basically chained up during birth, and, and they're suing him as well. All right, Christine, we still appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Thank you. All right, then. So we've got our panel here. I want to talk about um, not just this, but also in terms of where we are politically uh, and uh, the church. And so, look, you've always had um, pastors and others involved in politics. Uh, you, you've had folks who've endorsed, you've had folks who've campaigned. But one of the things that I've always said, that I don't care whether you uh, support a Democratic president or support a Republican president, I've always believed that uh, a, a pastor or a preacher has a prophetic role and not a partisan role. Uh -huh. And it's been very interesting to me watching this immigration battle across the country, uh, how silent white evangelicals have been. Uh, when you look at this proposed budget, of Trump, when you look at this uh, this uh, health care bill being pushed by Republicans as well, virtually silent, as if uh, there's no voice whatsoever. And I'm just trying to understand what Bible they're actually preaching from every Sunday. Right. Well, it's, it's an edited Bible where their ideology has infected or even silenced their theology, because again, when it comes to immigration. Uh, the Bible is clear. Hospitality to the stranger is a supreme value and virtue. So Jesus says, I was a stranger and you built a wall? No. I was a stranger and you uh, punished sanctuary cities? No. I was a stranger and you invited me in. Uh, going back to, again, this man in the White House who's all, who, whose ratings go up, He's acting presidential because he's concerned about babies in Syria, but he won't allow those babies to come to these shores. And so where is the prophetic witness denouncing that which is contrary to the Bible they claim to hold up? You're talking about a right-wing evangelical uh, part of, of the Christian faith that holds up the Bible. Everything they say, everything that's in it, they believe in it except when it comes to their ideology that's going to be contradicted by what the Bible clearly says. And our prophetic responsibility is to speak truth to power as opposed to getting in bed with power and then giving an illicit birth to a lot of the nonsense that we keep com that keeps coming forth. Sandra, a few years ago, uh, the governor of Alabama, not the one who cheated on his wife with the staff member <laughs> right. who just got impeached, right, right, right. Uh, not that one, right. uh, who also the ran uh, on a faith-based platform. Right. Uh, and, and him and his side, he's got kicked out of right. the church there. Uh, so a few years ago, uh, the, the governor was, they had a, a tax issue. And they wanted to change the tax code because in Alabama, uh, they began to tax the poor beginning at about $4,600. Yeah. This governor says, that's crazy. The business community was behind it. He ran on what would Jesus do when it came to helping the poor. The initiative lost 65 to 35. All of those white evangelicals, all of those people of faith who supported him turn against him because they picked their wallet over their Bible. Right. And so it's, 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 it's interesting to me when we're dealing with these issues 
where folks uh, love talking about Jesus and love talking about faith, uh, but as Pastor Haynes said, uh, when it comes to some a lot of these policies, oh, their ideology drives that. Right, and we cannot be inauthentic when it comes to our spiritual force and who we are prophetically as spiritual leaders. We have to take a stand. People have to take a stand, and that's what we want from our spiritual leaders because the spiritual leader is the voice to politics. It is the voice of God to politics. Not just the Bible, but the voice of God. Right. Good. Good. Paul? God is about light, love, and peace and inclusion. And you got to be able to not just talk the talk, you got to be able to walk the walk. And it's obviously that these people aren't walking the walk because they're not speaking up. They know it's not right, but it's not convenient for them to take that stance. And so they're not taking that stance. So again, it's about love, peace, and light. And God wants us to follow his plan. And his plan is about making sure that we do what we need to do to become a better society and better people. And that's not going to help us if they don't st step up and do something differently. And God is the God of the universe. He is the, he reigns supreme no matter what. Business, politics, he is God. Well, it'd be nice to have a godly president. All right, that's folks. Right. A peaceful protest turned deadly. 37-year-old black man was shot and killed by Baton Rouge police. His hands are in the air and you still get shot by the cops. Oh my God, please don't tell me he's dead. We're not gonna let hate define us. Race is a big part of this. If truly all lives matter, then all lives need to matter equally. What we require is action. What we require is accountability. We understand that black lives do matter. And we will keep focused on this issue. News One Now, every weekday morning at seven on TV One.